The exploitation and exploration of oil has been of great gain to Nigeria, but the negative results emanating from such production processes have been very disastrous to host communities. The truth is, as old as time itself, as old as the times when we discovered oil, um, the states that have been producing have been marginalized. And it is not much different in Akwa Ibom state. In Akwa Ibom, the difference is a lot of people are, they're more concerned about trying to survive, you know, trying to, you know, look to their next meal or, I don't think they're as conscious of the problems. I mean, they are aware, but they are not as conscious of what comes in. For example, the federal government um, sent in a refund of, I think, $3.3 million to Rivers and Aquabum State. I think Aquabum State received $171 billion now. And it's something that recently just came into light, and it happened a couple months ago. And that being said, it's, it's a problem because what $171 billion naira can do in these communities, it is so huge that the, the ripple effect of it is that if these people were tracking even the most minute ones, and I'm not talking about just these big ones, they would be able to understand that they're supposed to receive a lot more. They're not involved because a lot of them do not know the extent of the impact that oil has on their communities. A lot of them are not involved because they do not know the extent of the funding that comes in as a result of the oil derivation. There are some places where development basically never gets to. Tucked in the heart of Ibano is Mpana, a community which plays host to ExxonMobil's operational office, the Kwa Ibo Terminal. Under the blazing sun, gas is fled indiscriminately at the terminal and the community suffers for this. The oil exploration is what the nation is benefiting from, but the impact is what they give very little or minimal concern, especially negative impact. It is unfortunate that uh, Ibono is the local government that uh, the major oil produced in Aquarius and that of Nigeria in general comes from. And the result is not seen here anyway. If you go around the community, you witness some incidences. You also witness some deplorable situations, environments that is not supposed to be seen around an oil producing community. It's, uh, it's, it's a, a situation that requires serious concern. We need good drinking water. Of course, uh, we, we, buy, we buy our drinking water here. We need good roads, we do not have them. We need uh, electricity, we do not have them. We need good housing, we do not have them. We also need good health care centers, we do not have them. We need government concentration, we need a companies, IOCs concentration in the community where they are exploring, where they are producing oil. What those things we do not have. Through the stilts, I'm able to get further into Panak community, where I get to see the smooth road Locals tell me that a plethora of abandoned projects litter the community. Getting portable water is a challenge here. The water is simply not drinkable and its presence in tanks changes the color. This rusty signpost is for a water treatment plant in Ipanak. But the taps are dry. You see that water there? That was supposed to have been done by NDDC. The water there is not functioning. It has been abandoned for years. When you are talking about the custodian of abandoned projects, I think we have a higher mark. Even though we have 
so many abandoned projects. The impact of this is also felt at the health center. With a water tank that has changed color as a result of its content, So what do you do when you get water like this? How do you use it in the health facility? It's only for using washing all that, which is the most scary. This community health extension worker has been working here for a decade. He says that not much has changed since he began working here. I don't see any particular development that is really here. Uh, the only development that I see here is, is uh, the, cut, the, the grass cutting. The mobile helps in cutting the grass here. The, when the wind comes, eh, it is even the roof, by this time would have been removed. Look at, if you look on top of here, you see new, new, new nails there. It is us that are trying to see how we can maintain it. You see, it's maintenance of the, the hospital is not easy. See, uh, even the roof, it was, uh, the, 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 the ceiling is uh, almost removed. So, and the whole place looked very, you see, look, that is supposed to be a re renovation, which is supposed to be done. We don't have water here. Water, if the water that, 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 that tap that is there, it cannot be, cannot be used, eh? at least drinkable or otherwise. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be treated so that we can, at least, and channel it to the quarters or the hospital, and we don't have hands. Most people have retired, no workers. For us to run three shifts here in this place is not easy. So what we do now to help women is to give them numbers. If they happen to have their be in labor, they have to call that number so that we can, <laughs> we can come in the night and be with them until they deliver. And we have only one nurse here. And we have only three community health workers here. While a lot of activities go on around the facility, maintenance remains a big challenge. Some fans are now rusty. And some louvers are already falling off. It is a big challenge for women who come here for health care. The number of pregnant women that are coming here are reducing. Before, we normally have in a month, when compiling monthly summary, I, I will have up to 30 something to 40 women. But now, we don't have up to 20. The number is in reducing. Most of them, they patronize CBA in the village. They don't like, sometimes they will come and register once, just to take the TD and go back to the TBA to deliver their babies. What I think that the government should do to help them is that maybe at least they should provide something, maybe when they register, you give them something, or at the end of it, when they deliver, you give them money. That's what they are looking for. The water is the most important thing here because a pregnant woman may come now and she may feel like going to the toilet, but who is going to fetch water for her? Maybe she will be the one or the person that accompany her will go and fetch the water. 
the most challenged thing that we are facing here is that water problem. I need government to connect the water so that when our women come here, they will use the water. This is the Garvin Primary School. The only secondary school is located at the local government headquarters in Upenekang. But a lot still needs to be done to ensure a conducive learning environment. Uh, one of the challenges that we are facing here is lack of security. Both the day man and the night man we don't have. So at times this gate will be open and villagers will come in you know, do a lot of havoc in the school. Then number two, we don't have good water for the children, but the one they can use in flushing the toilets and drinking water. Then number three, we don't have attendants in the school to take care of the junior ones in the ECC classroom, ECC one and ECC two. And number four, we don't have enough teachers in the school. A school of a population of about 3,600 and something pupils, we have only 13 teachers. So it's difficult for the teachers to do their work effectively. Good. Connected development has been one of those uh, factors that has projected the, the challenges and the plight of the community. They conducted a kind of a program, symposium, that enlightened the people, the community, on how to go about what they want and the factors, the, the agencies that are responsible in handling series of uh, development and, and challenges in government and that of the IOC. So they had done a lot to give us that education and also project our interest to the world. Connected Development uh, began its work in Akwaibom State in 2019. And it began with uh, a training of community members in, uh, in the oil community around uh, conflict and fragility. Good uh, was able to bring the leaders of the community to Uyo and they were trained on the need to ensure gender inclusion in the local governance. So you have a community development committee without any female representation. So the demands of the women are not carried along in developmental projects and governance. So at the end of that training, at least we're able to, uh, to achieve women representation in that uh, local governance, in that uh, community, specifically the oil producing community of Ibona local government. Connected Development was able to train the women on what they should do with this uh, opportunity that has been given to them, how to galvanize the concerns of women, the girl child, and push for projects and uh, developmental uh, engagements for the women. So when they came back, they were able to establish Banag Women Development Association. So with that association, it is a legal framework that will uh, make, that will uh, help them to push and get uh, developmental projects. So, so before then, that community did not have that kind of women structured uh, organization that pushes for the demands of women. So Connected Development provided that leverage. For more than two years, Grace Ackman has been the chief 
amplifying the voices of women, children and youths in the community. With God, we know that it is our responsibility to know what is going on in the community, that women should be part of decision making. And code has also helped us to know that when we see a project, abandoned project, we should find out who is the person handling this project. Then we follow up so that such project can be completed. We've been able to talk to the village council and we are now part of the village council. So once they want to make decision, few of us are invited to represent the women for. I like code also to continue to help us so that we can help or we can ask the oil company to do the most the important things that we need in the community, like giving us good drinks. Ends, but it has been abandoned. The overhead tank is nowhere to be found. The only thing that remains are the pillars. In a Koritak community, portable water is a luxury. The search for water is a long one, one they have lived with for years with no solution in sight. Bowls are lined up outside huts in hopes for some rain to produce water for domestic use. They also rely on sachet water 
brought in from neighboring communities. Community elders take us around the community. Somewhere in the community, we saw residents fetching water near a corked oil well belonging to Network Exploration and Production. This water is for drinking and domestic use, not minding its color and taste. Locals tell us that it is groundwater and it is the cleanest you can find in the community. But it is by no means clean, with spirogyra and dirt bearing. This is what many community members have to live with. This is the government primary school in Okoritak. Since the inauguration of the sixth classroom block in 2011, it has remained this way. No teachers and no facilities. It is just a structure gradually sleeping into dilapidation. Just like in Panak community, local fishermen are finding it difficult to cope in the search for fish. That, let that man come. That thing they are trying to rearrange is the hook they use to catch fish. The oil spillage spoil everything. When we the fishing, the oil spoil the water. There is nothing like fish. Even this hook, see as it look at now. You see my hand. The, the oil spillage, full the water. When it's full of the water like that, even the hook like this, it will spoil it. It melt it like this. Because the oil get power. The grow oil get power very well. And when they grow oil, fall for water, there is nothing like fish for day at all at all. So now we are suffering much for where we the fishing. So with the server now, well, well we feel good day, buy fuel, buy fuel, repair engine. Now, engine costs well, well. If you cannot fishing, big well, get money, you cannot buy. Then because of the oil spill now, we feel hungry for, for our business. We go rent money now, go buy fuel, go see, come back empty. We they go two times in a week. We feel good fishing two times in a week. If you go Monday, come back Tuesday. We can't uh, arrange them like this. We use two days to arrange them. The following day we go Friday, Saturday, the evening, we weekend. So we can, for some time, for that time with the oil, no even flow for any place. If you are again like 500,000, sometimes we get with more million. But now we cannot get something like 500 naira.
a road project meant to link communities in Ibn or local government has been abandoned for many years. Community members have no choice but to park their vehicles in neighboring communities. It was sun filled, but it is now left bare. The locals only see these equipment, which have been here for years. They continue to wait for the day when connecting the communities in Ibuno through link roads will be possible. For the people, there is a void in their hearts. It is that of living in want despite having an abundance of oil that could turn their situation around. The sun is setting as we live behind a community and a local government that seek help. Will they get it? And that too soon?